So here we are. In reality, three months from that unforgettable night we rescued the Cayenne out of the mountains. The last time I saw that car, it was sitting in a scrapyard after being flatbedded back to civilization. Now those were three long months where we had to mull over what to do with the entire Yibi Cayenne project as a whole. As the car sat at Bird Performance back in Denver, we had to ask ourselves, do we consider it totaled and scrap it there? Should we ship it back to Connecticut and figure out what the game plan was here? Do we source an engine and ship it out to Colorado to work on the car back there? We sourced ourselves one of the very few 4.8 liter twin turbos available in the country. This isn't as easy as you might think. It's not just an N54 or a 2.0T. It took a while. From there, we stuffed our suitcases full of cameras and FCPRO parts and headed back west. I am here at Bird Performance. Our oh, buddies nice. who went on the venture with us in the first place. Thanks to Sean telling us to go on that trail. And thanks to Cole for telling me to dive into the water. Uh, hey, but these hey, two I guys, <laughs> these two guys are coming in clutch. Uh, they're giving us their weekend to slave over swapping the engine on the Cayenne. So we've got a donor engine that we picked up. Uh, has about 90,000 miles. So technically the car is going to be happier. It's going to be younger. We ordered a ton of parts from SCPR. Obviously we sent them over this week probably more parts than we need, but we figured engines out, why not refresh it? Well, we can get to everything. You guys saw a struggle with some of what we had to deal with when the engine was in the car. So yeah, I guess first things first, we should probably just honestly devise a plan. The tone for the weekend was set. With no time to waste, we decided to divide and conquer our first set of tasks. Sean would start tackling fluid extraction, yes, including river water, and focus on engine removal, while Cole and I began to tear down and refresh the entirety of our junkyard engine. Our goal for the night was to get organized and a head start for a long weekend ahead of us. Yet again, Ethan and I had flights on Monday and Berg was back to business as usual come that morning. So this was the Cayenne's shot at driving out on its own. I have to give it to Eurowise. They make some pretty gnarly tubular plates and bumpers and skids that if we didn't have them, that car would have been pretty foobarred. Yeah, so thanks, Mike. Every time I heard that scraping sound, It was like horrible, but good. Cause I was like, armor's doing something yeah. that it's supposed to, but damn, that sounds bad. I think we're at a really good spot right now. So this is our new baby. It's got leaves on it. It looks a little dirty, but we are going to refresh it entirely. So it's a new heart. This is a it's... proper new heart. All right, well, let's start tearing into it. Piece by piece, part by part, we took the time to remove, assess, and clean things we may keep and others we'd be replacing with fresh new parts. The following day. You guys going to teach like an art class or something? What's going on here? <laughs> These are our smocks. Cole has standards. In his bed, I have to wear this. In Sean's bed, I don't have to wear anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're sophisticated here. <laughs> While we're in here, while everything's completely exposed, it just made sense to do the entire uh, dry belt system, so the accessory belt system. So tensioner, pulleys, just why not? They're all there, they're cheap, they're easy. We sell a kit for all of it, so I'm gonna swap those on now. Okay, I still haven't had my coffee yet but I'm working on cars, so it's a good day. We're trying to get to this thermostat housing and we have to take all the fuel systems uh, rail out. And so all of these little lines that you see go to a fuel injector that's sitting inside of the head. So we need to take this out. I've loosened all of this and this should just wiggle right out. And once we have this out, now we have a lot more clearance to get to all of the thermostat housing things that we need to. It'd be a little tricky, but. Yeah. And that's the starter. So if yeah. you ever have to do a starter on these cars, it's, pretty it's deep. Uh, a little buried. You gotta get down there. Crusty little boy. Yeah, he's starting to seep past the seal, you can see. All the all of that like residue right around there is you know would have in, in due time. Yeah. Would have found its way into the, the valley of death.
don't think this one was leaking like ours. It's definitely older than ours, since ours is maybe 120 miles on it. So we'll probably swap that one back over, but figured might as well check it. Seal actually looks, uh, seal's pretty flat and hard, but to be expected if it was never changed. Good little piece of success here. Got ECU out, got engine harness disconnected from body from the relay carrier up underneath the driver's side of the windshield. ECU's out of uh, the passenger side of the windshield cow right there. So we got the uh, engine harness is loosened, cool lines are disconnected up top. Engine mount carrier is disconnected. I'm doing some front end engine stuff now. Primary, secondary oxygen sensors are uh, disconnected from the body of the car as well. My goal is to have it out before noon. So I got about an hour and 15 minutes to do it. So let's keep moving. It's probably worth mentioning how badass working along two professional full-time mechanics was. The speed they move at, their ability to problem solve, and just their confidence that they carry to tackle any job at hand is something a casual DIYer like myself can only aspire to be someday. Oh, we're going, we're coming down. Everything's looking clear. A couple little things. Shifter cable was like, I just didn't even think about it. But once it started to come down a little bit, before it even hit tension, I saw it. So I had to work around the engine table, which put me past my 12 o'clock time, but we're almost there. So getting pretty close. I'm just being slow and steady wins the race on this. And we're out. 17 minutes behind schedule, but I did it. You know what, like, I stopped and talked to you. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Plus right. filming, which slows you down. That's okay. We're, we're, we're doing all right still, so. I think we're on schedule. We're. Once Sean had the entirety of the powertrain out and on the table, it was time to assess some of the damage we may not have been able to see with things in the car. Uh, it definitely, I this think it was. This one feels nice. It was a water pump for a little while. <laughs> this one feels good. We still need some parts from this engine for that one. Uh, so one of which being the vacuum pump, and just a few other things, and we're also kind of curious what this looks like inside, but that's for another date. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna start stripping this down, swap O2 sensors, anything that's available that wasn't available before, I'm gonna start working on that. Next up on the donor engine was refreshing the commonly problematic cooling system. No better time than now. The jump yard that took the motor out went a little ham on uh, that piece of pipe. And that's it. Got my horns. Accessories pulled off, so power steering pump, AC compressor, alternator. We get pulled off here so we can install on that, get serpentine belt and tensioner and everything put on that one. And I need to get caps off of this. That one I need to get first because I got to get those torque converter bolts out to start kind of comparing and contrasting what's on this, what that one doesn't have, and just make sure that by the time we're ready to lift this one off, that one goes on, we can bolt it together and put it home. There's an AC compressor. That's the last of the accessories, thankfully. Those are uh, those are pretty in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 oh. 
Remember that horrid sound of our bent rod? Well, yes, the engine was hydro locked. We still had to rotate the engine in order to get access to the bolts that hold the torque converter to the ring gear. So it ain't, it ain't going through. I tried to get the hammer down in the hole and kind of give it a little whack on the pistons that are moving down as we're rolling forward. No avail. How big of a bar have you gone? It's not a very big bar. Not a, like an actual breaker. <laughs> Yeah, need some lumberjack strength. Where do you? Oh, a little farther. Look I thought that bar was snapping. Okay, uh, right. Oh, too far. How many too people strong. does it take to turn over a motor? <laughs> Jeez. You're right there. I'm Back pulling out off. flex plate bolts for the flex plate to torque converter, so that when we pull the engine off, torque converter stays with the transmission and doesn't come with the engine. If that torque converter comes off with the engine, we will have gallons of transmission fluid that will pour onto my floor, and I would love to not clean that up. <laughs> so this is that sight window where you can get your tool in those bolts. And you can spin those bolts out. I'll show you one here for just a second. We're swapping one of the, we think it's a, what, a turbo? It's like a, Tur it's coming by the PCV is there a system. Vent down there, like a check valve or something? I don't know what this line is, but the donor engine had a pretty gnarly nick on it, but this was basically showing cords behind the, the rubber. So we're just gonna swap it over. Those are the kinds of things we're kind of looking for throughout this entire reassembly, unassembly, is just stuff that doesn't look great. On the engine, we swapped over basically everything we could. We addressed the pulley system, the cooling system, the fueling system, the ignition system, the engine mounts. Basically, every box was checked to make this a completely refreshed engine. just took us 40 minutes out of the car that engineer did not get paid enough for that or maybe he, he got, got paid, paid too much. much for that yeah yeah, yeah. so mount came out this was stuck onto the engine mount bracket because you can see all this nice fuzzy white stuff is corrosion. You can see this very clean powdered metal little dot right here. There should be a locating dowel similar to this on that um, little hat right there that locates that engine mount and clocks it correctly in the engine mount bracket so that it lines up with the bolt holes in the engine mount carrier that sits on top of the subframe. Well, that guy broke off inside of that mount bracket and um, that kind of makes it tough for us to line up our engine mounted. Um, so now we got to figure out a way to get that out so we can get our engine mounted. We just got all the accessories except the AC compressor on this motor. We're about to roll it over to the table and meet them together, put the torque converter bolts in, bell housing bolts, and get this all prepped. So tomorrow we're going to come in, burn some gas, and get this thing out the door.
Mm-hmm. Although the mating process can seem straightforward, it is still a dance for two. Moving things around, adjusting the pitch and angle the engine is going to the transmission, ensuring you aren't contacting anything or pinching something. At the end of a long day, it can feel like quite the task, especially with an engine this large. Transmission's in, now what? Uh, nothing fits. <laughs> now the motor mounts, this side, we're having to like torque them in order to get them lined up. But we checked like with the ones that we took out and they, they match one to one, so we're not sure why they're not lining up perfectly. Alright, well, I'm starving because we're still on that time change. Uh, we're gonna go back, grab some sleep and some food, and then we'll be here at six or seven in the morning. Yeah. Sounds so, good. Uh, let's get 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 at it. Alright. The next morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Nah. Luckily, Sean came in feeling good. Just pulled out the anchor, so uh, we got this. Feeling We're a little good. shitty from last night. Sean already fixed the engine mount situation, so that dowel must have slipped off when we were tightening it. Um, so he's got that situated, which is nice. But yeah, things just start to come back together. Uh, it's just a lot of little stuff. And then it can go up. So even though it was a weekend trip, we had to stay on schedule in order to get out of there on time. That meant today, day two, the engine had to be back in the car and running before nighttime. The race was on. So after you get transmission mated to block, um, the flex plate, which is bolted to the crank on the motor, has holes in it that line up with pairs of bolt holes on the actual body of the torque converter to lock the flex plate and torque converter together. After you get them mated, you have to go through this little sight window to get those bolts through the flex plate into the torque converter body to lock those two together. You have to line them up. So now we're playing the game of trying to get those two things lined up to be able to put torque converter bolts through the flex plate into the torque converter. All done, got all six of them in there. This is your little, uh, sight window plug that goes into the block for access to those torque converter bolts. Before we get this in here and get intake system put together, we just wanna, we're blowing out the intercooler to just verify there's no pooled water in there that's gonna get sucked into the new motor because that would be a would be a bad day. Suck. Uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. Yeah. We're just getting our game plan together of how you know we're gonna kind of walk some stuff in as the engine comes out. When I dropped it yesterday, it uh, was a little bit of a kind of slow walk down, so it's gonna be the same process going back in, slow walk up, kind of jiggle and center of the thing, we'll get subframe bolts in there, and then once the subframe bolts are in there, we'll uh, get those snug down a little bit, and then um, start plumbing. Plumbing.
Yeah, that's my fear, somebody getting pinched. Huh? That's my fear, somebody getting pinched. Right. The new non hydro locked engine is made it to trans and is now in the car. So here we go. All right, come down. Insert Rocky music here. Catch it. How's it feel to have a maybe almost working Cayenne again? You know me, dude. I'm so pessimistic that I don't want to consider this a win yet, but it's exciting to see it back up and off the table. I mean, these guys know what they're doing, so I should have more faith than if I were doing it myself. But yeah, uh, excited but nervous. I'm gonna be crying if this was him by himself. I wouldn't be here. I would get. It would have been a Facebook marketplace. Pick up as is. I gotta get harness rerouted, fuel lines put on, vacuum system replumbed, inlets put on and tightened, lower intercooler hoses, throttle body snout, MAP sensor, primary secondary oxygen sensors plugged in. Air filters, MAFs, power steering fluid, hook up PDCC. Uh, we don't need to bleed it or anything yet, but we need to hook it up. Cause it's kind of basic reassembly stuff. Um, there's some stuff you can kind of wait on, you know, since we're at, with this project, you know, we want to verify, obviously the thing's gonna run before we do a bunch of other stuff. So I wanna make sure it has oil pressure, burns gas, doesn't misfire, stuff like that. So once we get um, kind of basic, just engine running stuff put on the, put on the motor and uh, electrical system kind of woken back up and not so unbelievably pissed, Pizza. Dog, I finally got you some slices, bro. All the way from the East Coast. Beer on tap, baby. Should have came. We asked you. We invited you. No. You gotta be busy. Pretty socialite. You didn't have to do it like that. Now I can't use that coal. Right. Where'd you, where'd you find it? It's there, dude. Oh, I swear to God. Pick that bag up. Do you want to see the video? Yeah, run it back, dude. Run it back. put it in right now the slippery juice and then we can start it without coolant not worried about that we're not gonna run it for a long time I just want to make sure it starts dear car gods we have been slaving for about two days straight almost and this cayenne deserves another life it's been dead for a while but we gave it a lot of love this weekend flashback I'm gonna pray that we did not bend the rod and we're gonna burn some gas today amen Amen. Amen. <laughs> End of flashback. Burn gas. Burn, burn gas. gas. Car guy just didn't do this. We did this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Baby. Yeah. That's what's up. Dude. 
first Wait, crank, baby. Let's let's do the the test to see if it cranks. So let me clear codes real quick because let's add some let's, uh, let's warp the head right here. This is this is the second attempt. We burned gas. Sweet. Everything else is still f***, but. <laughs> okay, so he's freaking go, dude. That's freaking go, man. Ugh. Uh, thank you so much. Man. Absolutely, bro. Not a problem, man. Happy to help. Yippee Cayenne mother trucker. The Cayenne lived again. But it still wasn't victory, as we had a laundry list of items still left to go. Namely, the air suspension, front subframe, drive shaft, exhaust, cooling system, AC system. You get it. There was still a lot left to call this complete. So if you look, you have wide landings and skinny landings in this tripod joint. The It's kind of counterintuitive, but the wide landings here need to line up with the skinny gaps on the cage. Um, you would think, like I just put it together, that wide goes with wide, skinny goes with skinny, but then the balls don't move, and you have a seized CV joint that will blow up. So, a little bit of to get them back together. I think that's what I need to do. There we go. Just going by itself? Yep. That's it. And see, we have a CV now. Yeah. C? C got a V! So I'm making a, a grooved, so it's it's cupped to in the middle too in that groove, so I can the ball when I snap it in it'll it won't slide out. So I'm gonna put a bolt through there, and then it's gonna wrap around. Once I snap it in, it should be able to cup it. So, so see how that's just, like it's not just domed. A fix, it's an improvement. <laughs> I mean, this was yeah. Problem number one, main problem, solved. Engine sounds great, so idling, doing what needs to do. Not leaking yet, that I can see. Um, no, but I have total faith in that being good. Now we're trying to diagnose what actually happened with the air suspension. So Aaron fixed that sensor, um, but we don't hear the compressor kicking on. You know we've had plenty of air suspension problems with this car since we've had it, but we've got to plug in right now and trying to diagnose it, uh, see why it's not happy. So we can't get the car to pump up. Found out that the 40 amp fuse uh, is blowing instantaneously as soon as we go to try to fill the suspension. I think the compressor probably took on a little bit of water and now won't move. So we're gonna try to jump start it, <laughs> hopefully. If it starts moving, then we can put a, a new fuse back in and actually get it to start working. Okay, go ahead, turn it on. On. And the inlet's up by the airbox for... For the pump? Oh. Yeah. I bet that f***er sucked in water from yeah. up there. It's because that's right on the... on the. It's on the, it's yeah. on the inlet to the yeah. airbox. I bet if that pump ran at any point... Then, then it was in the it, water. When, water yeah. it, it probably sucked it from the airbox because the airbox took water. <laughs> Damn. Man, you had like every, every, all the, every all motor. the pistons are up in here. I bet what you got bent rods in yeah, your what? compressor. <laughs> Mount that one on the wall. 
I personally want to thank the guys at Ferg. Uh, Aaron set this up. We've been talking. I think it's been three months, honestly, yeah, since this happened. Uh, so it was a few weeks of us both losing sleep. You know, we always wanted to kind of put a bow on this, and we're pretty freaking close. Uh, Sean and Cole, again, I thank you a million times this weekend, but I can't say it enough. Genuinely appreciate you guys giving me your weekend. My goal for the end of the weekend was to drive out of here under its own power, and it has done you that. You noticed that it's not there. It's true. <laughs> it's here. We didn't push it. <laughs> so power train's in. Burns gas. Sounds good. Doesn't misfire. Yeah. No, yeah. no engine faults or nothing massive there. So no engine fluids, stuff is no fluids pouring out of it. Yeah. Yep, all fluids <laughs> are still in it. So that's we a, didn't that's put the skid plate on just in case. Actually, yep. that's why we yep. didn't put it on. Yep. Um, but no, I mean honestly, like air suspension problems, we've had that since we bought the car. So so did, like not not this in depth where we hydro locked the compressor potentially, <laughs> but uh, we have had problems. So we'll address that. We honestly we're gonna overnight uh, compressor for tomorrow morning before Ethan and I fly out. Try to fix it, get it ready to at least ship. We have a little buttoning up to do that I'll just do in the morning, but we're honestly in really, really, really good shape. I cannot thank you guys enough. The next morning. Yo, we do. Job we've done three times. So we're taking care of that hydro lock compressor this morning before we head back to Connecticut. We uh, moved our flights back a little bit so we can fly out tonight. Uh, so we can get this kind of wrapped up in a way that it's good to ship. Um, so both compression needs to come down. I kind of want to open it up to see if we can see that it was actually hydro lock, but it shouldn't be bad. We've done this a few times. Dude, electrical connectors are alone. Are not Again, too. dude, flashback to episode two. And we got it. So satisfying when you hear that pop. If you watch my DOS, I suggest push you in, push, push in, in, push on the thing, and then you pull out. Push in, and you pull out. Like it doesn't work. There's some corrosion and some water. Oh yeah. Ready to go back in. And uh, yeah, we definitely found a smoking gun, so that felt good. We did realize that the end of the compressor was a little bit different on the new one. Um, so we had to swap the old one over, but we swapped over all of the new internals. So hopefully this works. It's in. I hate putting in these lines. Just the fittings never feel great, but we will see what it does. Your best friend is back. We used Autel a lot. This whole series should have been sponsored by Autel. Put him up, not too late. around I'm trying to actually reset the steering angle sensor but look at you can see the front it's coming up right now the rears up so compressor is working steering angle sensor still being a little wonky but that's huge obviously I mean we kind of found a smoking gun so it made sense but it's great that it's actually using the sensor properly and it's recalibrating right now super hopeful I mean it's cool it's actually kind of cool to see it lifting back up now it feels like alive alive She got there. Uh, it's like moving these seats around. Time to put these bad boys back in. Oh, I don't miss this process. But it's really just four bolts. It's just all the other stuff and how it goes in that's annoying. This is sick. What? Metric 
car working. <laughs> yeah, dude. Can you believe it? No. We are bleeding PDCC, so the active sway bar. Yep, Whoa. there it goes. Whoa. Yep, this is active sway bar. So the car will lift and lower itself via the active sway bars. What's up, baby? Yo, girl. Yo, how's it smelling there? Well, we just said it needs a hidalgo detail for sure. Oh, God. And we rolling, boy. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, I just gave you goosebumps. First rip, dude. We haven't driven it yet. We, we had to bring you. I'm uh, pretty much. I mean, still don't want to believe it quite yet. Obviously. Control arms, we got to do control arms. They're shot. Well, I wish you were here, man. All weekend, we're like, man, I wish Mike was here. Alright, well, we'll let you work. We just wanted to say hi. We miss you. Alright, miss you too. Have a right. safe flight. Later. Bye, Mike. <laughs> Poor Mike. First rip, dude. That First rip. It? it feels good. Car, like, I'm like so anxious though. Like, don't want to trust anything about what's happening right now. Like, waiting for a huge clunk. Something's like. That's me. I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just scared. That is what we call Mike. But. Car feels great. Genuinely, I gave up on this a while ago. Like, I knew that it could be fixed. It just felt like so much work, so far away from home. Money, time, everything about it just seemed unreasonable. So to be at this moment right now, like, it's a total full circle from when I first got the car uh, and we really first started tackling it. So yeah, I'm like pessimistically giddy right now. The amount of support to get this car back on the road cannot be understated. The team at Berg Performance went out of their way to ensure the Yippie Cayenne was properly revived. The amount of work in swapping that engine over a long weekend was no small feat and would not have been possible without them. With things finally looking up again, it was time to get the car back to Connecticut where Mike and I could finally finish this project off with all the finishing touches to make it the ultimate European tow rig. If you're enjoying the Yippie Cayenne series, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the finale. Yeah. <laughs> that felt real. Awesome. That felt real. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna load up.